Hello everyone, this has been with the Green Hill. This week's Come Follow Me is amazing. It's extremely important. We go over Matthew 1, Matthew 24 through 25, Mark 12 through 13, and Luke 21. And the reason it's so important is because these scriptures give us a huge key of where we are at in the timeline heading up to the second coming. So let's just get into a little bit of this study, and I think you'll really like what what is uh, uncovered here. First of all, from the Come Follow Me manual, it says, Jesus' disciples must have found his prophecy startling. The mighty temple of Jerusalem, the spiritual and cultural center of the Jewish people, would be destroyed so utterly that there would not be left one stone upon another. Naturally, the disciples wanted to know more. When shall these things be? They asked, and what is the sign of thy coming? The Savior's answer revealed that the great destruction coming to Jerusalem, a prophecy fulfilled in about 70 AD, would be relatively small compared to the signs of his coming in the last days. So Jesus told them, like, hey, this is coming in your generation. And it happened, you know, 36 years later in, in 70 AD, uh, the temple was totally decimated. The abomination of desolation happened. And every single brick of the temple, stone of the temple was turned over. And um, and then he gave them more info about the last days. Let's continue. It says, things that seem even more stable than the temple in Jerusalem will prove to be temporary. The sun, the moon, the stars, the nations, and the sea. Even the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And we find that in Joseph Smith, Matthew 133. So if we are spiritually aware, this commotion can teach us to put our trust in something truly permanent. Uh, as Jesus promised, heaven and earth shall pass away, yet my words shall not pass away. And whoso treasureth up my word shall not be deceived. So let's treasure up a little bit of the word and, and try to find out some of the cool keys that Christ gives us here. First, what is Joseph Smith Matthew? Joseph Smith Matthew, it's located in the Pearl of Great Price. Um, it is the Joseph Smith translation of the last verse of Matthew 23 and all of Matthew 24. And Joseph Smith's inspired version, uh, revision, restore precious truths that had been lost. Verses 12 through 21, that refers to the destruction of Jerusalem uh, that we just talked about it in 70 AD. And then um, verses 21 through 55 contain prophecies about our day, the last day. And this week, you know, going through this study, having that in my mind, I watched something that was super interesting and, and went right along with this. This is, uh, it's Jim Caviezel, and he has an interview with Steve, Steve Bannon talking about uh, a new film, The Sound of Freedom. And Jim Caviezel, he is the star of like Count of Monte Cristo. He's awesome. And he, in this new role, is playing Tim Ballard and basically going through some of the, you know, recovery missions that Tim Ballard did. Anyways, this is what he had to say. I think you'll like it. We're in a, I, know. I would say an apocalyptic moment right now. I, I think of the words that Jesus talks about when people say, when is the end coming? And Jesus looks, why do you ask me for the signs of the times? You look at the clouds and you know it will rain and so it does. Why do you ask me this? Can you not see what's going on? Can you not see that we have a self? We don't have a country anymore. By definition, you have to have borders. We don't have a border. Why would you continue to listen to a media that's lying to you every day? You know, a couple of years ago, I, I, I'm on talking about adrenochrome. You can't say that word. You cannot say anything bad on George Soros. Do you know that he know he owns many of these Companies like the Daily Beast, boy, they sure had their fun tearing me apart. I lost my agents. 17 years. 
and my other agent of 15 years because they listen to them. You don't, you think you have a selection? Sorry, you think you know what the truth is. You don't, you have a selection. You're not free. And God wants you to be free. I'm talking about the God of Christ, Jesus. The beautiful picture that you have. Okay, so what's he saying here? He's basically saying, he's basically saying, look, the signs of the times, like, we have need to make a movie about child trafficking. Is that not a sign enough that what time we're in? Like what's on the horizon that we have to open up people's eyes to something as terrible as child trafficking? Um, you know, just just this week with everything that's happening with Target, um, you know, when our our local grocery store and market is teaming up with Satanists. Um, when in the, the kids section is filled with, you know, pride, propaganda, swimming suits that you have to tuck it and bind the breasts. I mean, my word, do we need more of a sign than this of where we're at? Um, but so that we can be crystal clear Christ does give us more of a sign. And this is found in Luke, Luke 21, and it's verses 24 through 26. We'll start, but let's go to the Joseph Smith translation of it. We read, Now these things um, he spake, Jesus, it's not letting me scroll through the, Joseph Smith translation. Okay, let's read the Joseph Smith translation of this. It is Luke 21, 24 through 26. It says, Now these things he spake unto them concerning the destruction of Jerusalem. And then his disciples asked him, saying, Master, tell us concerning thy coming. And he answered them and said, In the generation in which the times of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. So that's what we need to remember. The time of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. Um, which, sorry, with perplexity, like the sea and the uh, waves roaring. The earth also shall be troubled, and the waters of the great deep, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, uh, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then we go down to Luke 32. <laughs> And there's another Joseph Smith translation, so let's pull that one up. Verily I say unto you, this generation, the generation when the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that's what we need to remember, right? The times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Um, shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So that generation, when the Gentiles, uh, the you know, the, the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled, that generation will basically see everything. Uh, the problem is we don't quite know when the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. Uh, fortunately for us, we have a Latter-day Prophet and Joseph Smith is amazing. So uh, Joseph Smith in DNC 45 received revelation from the Lord about when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. And that's important because that marks for us the generation uh, that we'll see the end of all, all things. So let's go to DNC chapter 45. Uh, first clue is um, in verses 24 through 25. It says, And I have told you concerning Jerusalem, that when the, that day shall come, uh, shall the remnant be scattered among all nations. So the Jews are scattered among all nations, but they shall be gathered again. 
but they shall remain until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So when the Jews are gathered again, starting to be gathered again to Jerusalem, that is the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled. Now, Gentiles being fulfilled doesn't mean the time of the Gentiles is over. Uh, the time of the Gentiles began with, you know, Peter starting the missionary work to the Gentile nations. It continued. And then uh, when Joseph Smith, when Moroni came to Joseph Smith, he told him shortly the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. Um, here's a clue of when that fulfillment is. That's when the Jews start returning to Jerusalem. In 1917, the Jews reclaim Israel. And then in 1967, the Six-Day War, uh, Israel is able to conquer Jerusalem and, and bring that into uh, their Israel nation. So from 1917 to 1967, that is the time when the Jews are returning to Jerusalem and to Israel. And that's the clue Christ gives us right here of when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Fulfilled is, isn't finished. Finished would be at Armageddon when the, the Gentiles are destroyed in, in the huge um, you know, battle there. That would be finished. This is fulfilled. It's two different things. Uh, for a second testimony, Christ gives us another clue. And that would be in DNC 45, 28 through 30. It says, And when the time of the Gentiles is come in, a light shall break forth among them that sit in darkness. Uh, so that's, you know, Joseph Smith receiving the fullness of the gospel. That's that light breaking in. And it shall be the fullness of my gospel. So they receive the fullness of the gospel. But they receive it not, for they perceive not the light, and they turn their hearts from me because of the precepts of men. So think of a, a time after we received the fullness that uh, we rejected part of the fullness of the gospel. Uh, you might want to look at uh, the end of the Doctrine and Covenants and the, the different declarations that were given. Um, and in that generation shall the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So that was in 1890. So our, our window for this generation is between 1890 and in 1967 that generation will see the the fullness of times they'll see uh, christ coming to new jerusalem and uh, being crowned king there and in fact there's some really cool quotes and i won't i won't go into these i'll actually put a link to micah from Ziner bust has an awesome a long paper on this about you know the the time of uh, the, the generation that's pointed out here and basically Joseph Smith he points to the rising generation after him and Elder Bruce R. McConkie he basically says hey look we might not know the exact time but um, as to the generation yes we can know that and basically saying like we already know that guys um, it's pretty awesome. So I'll put a, a link to that paper. It's a great, great read or listen. He goes, Micah goes into depth about who this generation is. Um, Ezra Taft Benson. See if I can pull this into view. Come on. He says, for nearly 6,000 years, God has held you in reserve to make your uh, appearance in the final days before the second coming of the Lord. Every pre uh, previous gospel dispensation has drifted into apostasy, but your ours will not. God has saved for the final inning. Now he says the final inning. President Nelson says we're in the bottom of the ninth. So, President Nelson lets us know, like, hey, it's not even the final inning anymore. It's the bottom of the ninth. So God has saved for the final inning some of his strongest children who will help bear off the kingdom triumphantly. Make no mistake about it. You are a marked generation. 
So he, this was in 1979, and he let them know, like, hey, the generation has already been marked. Uh, we already know the generation that will see the end of all things. The problem is, is that that generation is timing out. And so my thought was like, is there an instance that we know where like, hey, you know, time is running out on these things being fulfilled? And yes, in um, in the Book of Mormon, Samuel gives a prophecy of in five years, you'll see the sign a day and night and a day with no darkness that um, that will be the sign of Christ's birth. And as they approach that time, the people are like, uh, hello, it's past. You guys are wrong. And um, this sign's not happening. And let me read a few of the verses here. It says, But there were some who began to say that the time was past for the words to be fulfilled, which were spoken by Samuel the Lamanite. Now it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers that all those who believed in those traditions would be put to death, except the sign should come to pass, which had been given by Samuel the prophet. So the unbelievers basically say, like, look, we're going to put you to death. The time's passed. Um, and then Nephi prays and he says, lift up your head, be of good cheer, for behold, the time is at hand. And on this night shall the sign be given, and on the morrow come I into the world to show unto you, to show unto the world that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. I know that all will be fulfilled that has been spoken of by the holy prophets. Uh, my wife and I were talking about the target thing and this song came on the radio and she says this is how i feel about target i think we're just going to have to go our separate ways so brothers and sisters we are in the last time and it's it's approaching to where people are going to say like look you guys joe smith was wrong these prophecies have not been fulfilled and they won't be fulfilled we're hitting right up on that line right but they will all be fulfilled. I know that to be true. Okay, guys, we got to go our separate way from Babylon. Uh, the time is approaching. I know Joseph Smith's prophet of God. I know we're in the last days. Say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.